Hey what's up YouTube, in this video I'll be showing you how to make a working ghost train slash haunted house. This is by far my favourite part of my how to build a fair slash carnival slash theme park tutorial playlist. This is the most fun, I'm going to be quiet now so you can sit back and enjoy as I play test my roller coaster. And there we have it, my favourite build out of the entire fair. If you do enjoy this video, please do remember to like and subscribe as it really helps me and the channel out very, very much. Without any further ado, let's get started. If you have been making the entire fair, this is where we are going to begin building the ghost train. If you have made the rather large white grid that you can see on the screen, follow the instructions along and that will show you where we both have to start building so that we are both starting in the exact same position. Here are some of the materials that we will need throughout the build. Please do make sure that you have access to all of these, but not only will we need these, we will also need these as well. This uses a lot of different materials, I hope you're prepared. Begin by placing two stone bricks on top of the previously designated start position. One, two. Then extend the second brick to the right by 18 using upside down stone stairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Then place a row of four stone bricks extending right. One, two, three, four. Then Extending backwards, place two upside down stone stairs. One, two. Then place a stone brick. Seven more stairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stone brick, and then join down to the ground. Extend across the entire back of the build using upside down stone stairs. I don't know what the measurement for this is. Other than the fact that we want to line it up with these stairs on the front of the build, place a stone brick on the end, and then extend it downwards. We then want to extend the stone brick forwards using seven upside down stairs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, place a stone brick, two more upside down stairs, and there we go. From here, we can simply fill the entire underneath of this platform that we have created in using stone bricks. There's really not too much more to it. Next, we are going to fill the foundation in using stone bricks. Once again, this is very simple. We simply want to connect the entire top of the platform that we have created. This is going to be the base of our build, the first level if you like. All of this simply just wants to be smoothed off and filled in using stone bricks. With the platform complete, we can now start working on the rest of the structure. Come all the way over to the front left hand corner of the platform and begin by placing a row of 5 stone bricks extending up from this corner. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We then want to extend this fifth brick all the way over to the right and the idea is that we want to connect it to the opposite corner of the platform. Not only that, we want to extend it backwards and join it down to the back corner of the platform, extend it all the way across the back and, you might have guessed it, join it down to the opposite back corner of the platform and then extend forwards like this. 
So from here, we also want to add two additional rows of stone bricks. On the left and right side, you may remember that we have a row of stone bricks separating two rows of upside down stairs. Well, we just want to extend those stone bricks upwards, just like this. So the next thing that we want to do now that we have laid out the structure of the ground level, we want to move up. So to do this, we want to come all the way back to the front left hand corner of the platform here and place a row of four stone bricks extending upwards from this corner. One, two, three, four. And then right by five. One, two, three, four, five. Extend all the way down to the lower part of the platform and then extend the same fifth block all the way backwards and join it down to the back of the low level of the platform as well. Extend across, join down to this corner, and extend forwards. We are essentially making a rectangular shape. And we want to do this on the opposite side as well, so if you come to the front right corner of the platform and extend upwards by one, two, three, four, left by five, one, two, three, four, five, and then join down, and then extend the corners backwards and join them down to the lower level of the platform as we did on the opposite side, join them down and then all the way back to the beginning again so that we have something that kind of looks like a, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of a frog, I don't know if anybody else sees that. So now that we have done that, the next thing that we are going to do is fill the center of this particular level of the platform in using stone brick. So just like we did on the previous level, we are now making the first floor, if you like, if the floor below us is the ground floor, then this is the first floor. We are going to completely fill this in using stone bricks. So now that we have something resembling a first floor, we are now able to make the center part of the first floor as well. So not only do we have this left and right side, we need something in the middle. So if you come all the way to the front middle-ish part of your build, where the row of stone bricks here connects down to the platform, right of this, we want to count inwards from this block, one, two, three. So on top of this, we want to place a row of seven stone bricks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just like this. So this row of seven here then wants to get extended all the way over to the right, and then of course down in the equivalent position just on the right side here. We also want to extend this seventh row forwards by one row, like this, and then extend it backwards by eight rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That should line up with the rest of the back of the build and you can even just join it down like this. So let's extend this corner across, join it down to the back of the platform, even and level with the rest of the back of the build and then join it forwards just like so. So the next part of this is relatively simple. We are going to fill in the tops of the left and right side of the first floor of our build. We have two floors in total, so if you don't include the ground, we're using the hotel system. We have a ground level, which is where we start, we move up to floor number one, and there is a floor number two as well, which is hidden in the attic of the center part of the ghost train. So that's going to be up there somewhere. So now that we've filled the tops of these in, I now want to give them roofs. And I kind of want to give the entire build roofs. 
On the back of the build, where the build is kind of like split into two, so literally like the lower half and the upper half, we have this horizontal row of stone bricks. I want you to add an additional row of stone bricks here, just hanging off of the back of the build. So the next thing is that we are going to have the two little sort of flat roofs made first. So, or better yet, actually, we can place a row of polished deep slate stairs all the way around the edge of the middle part of the build, which is why we just added the additional row just on the back here, extending off. There's a good reason for that, and you're going to see it in a second. So once we have added all of these deep slate stairs, which is fun to say because of the amount of S's. So now that we have placed this, underneath these stairs, starting from any one of the corners, we want to place a slab. And then we want to leave a gap of one and continue placing slabs all the way around the edge. And if we have done things correctly, then we should have a nice even pattern dispersed all the way around the edge of the middle of our build and this is kind of going to keep things separate so this is one of the ways that we've kind of separated the lower level of the build from the next level we kind of have like almost a skirt going all the way around and now the frog has a mustache <laughs> So now that we've done this, we are going to move up to the next level and we are going to place polished deep slate stairs all the way around the top of the left and right side of the build. Not only that, it will extend across the back of the build as well. So the stairs kind of only stop and separate just in the middle of the front where they join to the center, just like this. And then we're going to use polished blackstone slabs to make two square sort of flat. It's not really a flat roof because it's, it's well not flat, but we want to just use the polished blackstone slabs on the left and right side and we just want to have, it's just an ever so slightly raised roof. It will come to a natural end when we just have these two little, there we go. When there are just two rows in the center, it will kind of come to a natural end. And of course, we want to achieve the exact same effect on the opposite side as well. Perfect. So now that we have added the two smaller roofs, it's now time for us to make the larger roof. This is really easy. On the left and right side, we have two long rows of stone bricks. We want to turn these into triangular shapes instead of just two flat lines. The way to do that, of course, is by slowly adding ever shortening rows of stone bricks on top of the base row, kind of like a pyramid. We want to do this on both sides. This roof is the most complicated roof and yet it is still relatively simple. So once you have the two guide rows, we want to, at the edge of the roof, on the front and the back, we want to have a row of deep slate stairs. The center of the roof is going to be made up using polished blackstone stairs. The sides of the roof that overhang the rows of stone bricks that we've just placed want to be deep slate stairs and we also want to on the corner add polished deep slate slabs and we want to every other row place a row of polished deep slate slabs i've just got to extend this an additional row over we want to have the exact same effect that were created just down below it's also worth mentioning that we do not want to have this effect on the two smaller roofs. We are using it sparingly. So there you go. That's that's as easy as it gets. That is how the main roof, or the more complicated roof, the largest roof, the tallest roof, wants to look.
Oh, and also we do want to have upside down deep slate stairs underneath the overhanging row of deep slate stairs. I forgot to mention that. With the roofs majoritively made, we can choose to add a little bit of extra detail up at the top. I've just noticed a little aberrant deep slate there. So, all the way up at the top, you may choose to grab yourself a polished deep slate wall or a polished blackstone wall. On the front of the build, specifically the top front of the build, place a wall on the end with warped fence in between with a wall on the opposite end, just all the way up at the top of the roof, you might find that you like that little bit of extra on the roof. That might not be for everybody, but options, options. So to make it easy to add all of the details to the actual building itself, it would be best for us to give ourselves a nice empty blank canvas. So that involves filling all of the walls in using stone bricks. If we start on the left side of the build, we pretty much want to fill the entire left side of the build in except for the bottom right part, which is going to be open and that is kind of like the front, the entrance to our ghost train. So that nice little part which kind of looks like a porch wants to be nice and left open. The entire back of the build, however, the entire backside wants to be completely filled in using stone brick. So any anything that you can find, just completely fill it in, make sure all of those walls are sealed up. The entire right side of the build wants the exact same treatment as the left, so that should be fairly simple. And the front of the build isn't too complicated either. We want to fill the entire upper level of the build in using stone bricks, the entire upper level. However, on the ground floor, just as with the left and right sides, we want to leave that front part open and we want to connect the two walls together, the two rows of stone bricks that we placed earlier, the separating rows, those two sides want joining together. So that is set back from the outer part of the ghost train. And once all of that has been filled in using your stone bricks, we are now able to add some details finally. So let's make the actual stairs that lead us up to the entrance. We have a bunch of stone bricks on the bottom front right side of the build. I want you to extend the bricks forwards by two rows. So just like this, it will create a nice rectangular shape. We then want to place a couple of sets of stone stairs just leading left in front of the ghost train like this, and this is how we are going to get up to the actual entrance. And speaking of which, we don't really have an entrance or exit yet, but this is really easy to add. So this is actually the exit. This is as we walk up these stairs, this is where we will actually pop out of and we have to travel across the front first. So we are going to knock out this stone brick here, this is at the bottom just right next to the edge, and we want to knock out the two left of it. And then two rows above this, and then place upside down stone stairs in the two corners. Leaving a gap of one going left, I want you to create a separating row of grey concrete from the bottom to the top. On the opposite side of the build over here, we actually want to do the same thing. So this is the actual entrance. This is where we begin. Leave a gap of one, destroy this block, two to the right, destroy two rows above, and then place upside down stairs in the corners. The, we can actually connect the two sides of the ghost train, so the porch to the actual building together using warped fence. In addition to this, we want warped fence placed across the front of the build. So we leave a gap of one from these stone brick pillars, and then we just place our warped fence extending all the way over to the right, literally as far as it will go, and then seal up this little area as well. We of course want the same row of grey concrete that I almost forgot, and that is the lower level mostly complete. We do have more detail to add, but we're taking these things in small strides. So, moving up to the next floor here, we want to have two windows on the left and right side of the build. So, the windows 
are one row away away from the edge and I want you to destroy from the bottom to the top. Upside downstairs at the bottom, stone slab at the top, and we want to do this with both of the gaps. We also want to be able to exit and enter this part of the building here. So we can just destroy from the top to the bottom. You could even add a little stone slab here at the top. And this is where part of the ghost train is actually going to come through. So um, we will kind of like weave our way through the entire build. So we'll pop out here and then we'll enter here when we actually have an entranceway. But we want to come all the way over to the opposite side here. And we want to do the exact same thing with this little part of the build as we just did on, over there on the left. So we'll destroy this row here. So we have an entrance slash exit. And we have two little windows. Easy peasy. This is how it looks so far. The middle part of the build, which is very important as well, we want to separate, first of all, using a row of grey concrete. This is straight up the middle, dividing it in half like this. We then want to place an entrance and exit slap bang in the middle of this. So we'll leave a gap of one, destroy a row of one, two, three, two rows above it, with upside down stairs just in the corners, and there you go. It's, it's really, really simple. So we do this just on both sides, and there we have it. So... We will come out of here, enter here, we will shoot up into the ceiling, come back down, enter this part of the build, and then we will drop down through to the exit, which is just below that particular part of the build. We also have to add, and th this might be, we'll do that later as a matter of fact, we have to add some interior walls, but we will work on that a little bit later. So now that we've done this, we are going to come towards the back of the build, ladies and gentlemen, and we can add a little bit of detail back here. So there's not like a bunch of detail to be added or anything, but there's there's definitely enough that we should probably just get knocked out now. So on the back of the build, we want to create a couple of separating rows. So these rows are placed here and here, and you're going to be able to see now that I zoom out where these line up with. These line up with the center part of the build, so we want to extend these two rows out. Left and right of this, we want to create windows that are equal and opposite to the windows that we have on the front. And if we come over here as well, we want to do the exact same thing. So basically just leaving a row from the side, upside down stairs at the bottom, slabs at the top, easy peasy, nothing else to say about that. The center part of the build we want to, leaving a gap of one, we want to create the same set of windows that we actually have on the front. They're not lined up in the same way, but they are built in the same way. So like this, we want to have the, and you can see it's just right in the middle, we want to have the gaps with the stairs up at the top. We want to, leaving gaps of one, place a warped fence across the back center part of the build. We don't need to have it on the left and right side. So barring a little bit of black concrete and some soul lanterns, this is actually the entire back of the build complete. There's not too much more to it. So now that we have done all of that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to work on some of the finer detail. So the next thing that we are going to work on is pretty much everything in front of the ghost train. So if we start on the front left hand corner of the ghost train down here at the bottom and place a row of seven cobble wall, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, extending forwards, with a stone brick on the end, and then extend that forwards by three, one, two, three, and then left by three, one, two, three, back three, join all the way back to the start, and then we're going to dig the centre of this out and then replace the centre with something else, it doesn't really even matter. On the left, back and right sides, we want to add three rows of stone brick. So one, two, three, and same across the back, same on the right side, just like this. Seal the top off. We're going to add a row of glass pane just here on the right side, connecting from the uh, connecting the bottom to the top, and then all the way around the edge, polished deep slate stairs. So just like this. And underneath the corners, we want to add polished deep slate slabs. If I can jump this wall, which I apparently can't, my legs are too short, I guess. And there we go, perfect. We're going to add a couple of soul lanterns just to the front of this on the left and right side, but we also want to give this a little roof, which is going to be made using blackstone slabs all the way around in a little ring, and then we eventually want to peek it in the center, similar to what we did over there on the actual ghost train. On the open part of this little window here, we want an item frame with a paper, 
and we want to stick a stair here in the back right corner. Oh, we should also extend the glass pane across at the top because otherwise the volunteering worker will escape. <laughs> so we're going to throw all of these away for a second. We, we There's going to be a lot of different material changes here. So we need dark oak trapdoors, candles, flint and steel and a chest. So chest in the bottom, dark oak trapdoor above it in such a way that we can place candles on it. A couple of candles, light them up. There you go. Absolutely perfect. So if we grab a shovel, we want to have a couple of rows of grass path leading from in front of this little booth, little kiosk, whatever you want to call it, leading towards the back and then across the back. So this will this is how we are led to the stairs. There we go. So that is how we are led to the stairs like this. So we walk across the front of the build, which, by the way, if we grab some stone, I only have stone slabs. If we have a couple of rows of stone leading across the front of the build, parallel pretty much to the entire front of the ghost train, just like this, and we get this filled in. This is going to kind of like set the scene for the area that we have to fill in. And there we go, so that's perfect. So if you can kind of see, we have kind of like a... A box almost really so a couple of rows of stone joins to the grass path grass path goes across the back then well towards the back and then across the back and joins to the entrance uh, if we grab the warped fence we want to also have warped fence so the warped fence wants to get placed inside of the stone path that we've placed and we want to place the warped fence every other block and it should kind of like just extend across the front nicely we also want to extend it towards the back as well, just like this. That's absolutely perfect. And I think that we're also going to turn one of these fence into a lantern. So maybe this one here, the first one that starts to extend towards the back. A couple of fence on top, a couple of wall. So on the back wall here we'll have deep slate wall on top, cobblestone wall. Underneath it a soul lantern, just like this. And there's, there's actually a little decoration that I think that we might get all of that we might place because it, it's like a repeatable decoration and um, I think it might be a good idea to place it. So this decoration in particular that I keep alluding to requires a soul lantern, polished deep slate wall and a warped sign and we want to place in various parts of the build starting on the front left hand corner of the build here we want to place a wall, soul lantern with warped signs all the way around the edge of this like so. So that's one place that we want to reuse this decoration. We want the same decoration right in the middle here between the entrance and exit of the train. So wall, lantern, and then signs around it. So this is pushed up towards the top of the ceiling there. We want the same thing on the opposite side here as well. So this is like the actual main entrance here, not the entrance to the right. I guess technically things get confusing because that's like the entrance to the actual ride and then that's the entrance as well. Anyway. The point is that you can see the three sets of lanterns that we want to place in this manner. Ha, huh, manner. And we also want to have this exact same thing up here as well. So hanging off of the grey concrete row pushed up towards the top here, we want to have the exact same thing. So wall, lantern on top, warp signs around it. And we also want to place a couple of warped lanterns on the front of the build, independent of the decoration that we've been adding. And we just want them to hang in front of the left and right sides of the build, like this. And then on the back of the build we have some more of these to place. So on the back of the build we want to have the warped lanterns, um, or soul lanterns. I keep calling them... Have I been calling them warped lanterns this entire time, or have I been calling them soul lanterns? Some of you guys have... Uh, I bet have been driven crazy. I apologise. I, I have no idea what I've been calling these, but soul lanterns anyway. So soul lanterns hanging off the back two uh, sides of this. And we also just want to have it have one here. So just like right in the middle, just like this. Just right on the middle of the back of the build. And there we go. That keeps things just like nice and brightish. I know it's the middle of the day, but you guys get the idea. This place looks really cool at night. So that is all of that particular decoration placed. And whilst we have the warped fence, <laughs> or soul fence as I might have been calling it, we want to leave a gap of one and place a row of, of warped fence. I literally almost called it soul fence then. Warped fence connecting the left and right side of the build together at the front just in the middle. And there we go. That's absolutely perfect. 
And once we've done that, that further propels us towards uh, detailing the rest of the build. So, to detail the rest of the build, which we do indeed have to do, we are going to... By the way, this chest here, we use a couple of chests in this build. One of them is in here. And the other one is here, right at the actual like start of the ride. So this is where we're going to store minecarts. We will never need chests again. So, nor do we ever need dark oak trap doors again. So, for the front part of the build, we are going to use a bunch of different things. But I'm going to start by grabbing lime glass and lime concrete. I'm then going to grab soul sand, corster, pods on. And I also want to grab some... We'll grab a few different sets of stairs. And also polished deep slate wall as well. So let's start off with this. Because it, there's just a bunch of stuff we need down here. So on the right side of the build here. I kind of want to make what I would call an ooze pit. And you can see that there's already a little bit of uh, lime concrete built into the floor here. I won't explain to you why that's there. But it is. It is there for a reason. So anyway, we want to dig out a, an area... On the right side of the build here, maybe even a little bit smaller than um, I've built here now, but we'll, we'll experiment, experiment with this. And we want to dig two rows into the ground, kind of like an abstract shape, replace the blocks in the ground using lime concrete, and then we want to have the lime glass placed on top of this to make what perfect to make what i would describe as like just like a little ooze pit kind of looks like something that you wouldn't want to fall in i certainly wouldn't we want to have a couple of gravestones placed in the front of this as well so gravestones are very easily made by placing two back-to-back -to -back stairs together and then in front of said stairs if we dig a couple of rows and replace that with ponzol or a mixture of ponzol and coarse dirt or a mixture of ponzol coarse dirt and soul sand or a mixture of either of the three in any sort of combination that you want, you can have a little gravestone. There's also an additional way to make a little gravestone or a grave marker. If we leave a gap of two between this, because this requires a bit more room, and we place ourselves a wall, I'm using polished deep slate wall, chiseled polished deep slate, pis chiseled polished blackstone in the center, and then polished deep slate wall either side of it, it just looks like a little cross or a grave marker. And then similarly, if we just dig a couple of rows in front, place a pod sole, a cool stir, place a pod sole, sole sand, whatever you want, just in front of this, or even double pod sole looks really good as well, then we have a little grave marker. I want a couple of graves leading, so as we walk in, kind of like leading us towards the actual ghost train as well. So my personal favorite combination is cobblestone stairs with a stone stair. So I'm going to place that, leave a gap of one, and then have the exact same thing. And then once again, um, both of these might be pods salt, or I'll make like one of these just straight up pod salt, and then I'll add coal, uh, coal stoke, salt sand, and then pod salt in between. I think that that looks good. So that ba it basically, like, if you just use pod salt, or if you just use one of the materials, it looks fine, but if you mix it up, it kind of looks like the ground is disheveled, meaning, you know, somebody has been in and out of the grave, possibly. So using a bit of imagination there. I'm going to rough up the ground a little bit and place some coarse dirt, some pods all, some soul sand, just, whoops, some soul sand just about the place, just mess it up a bit. From here, we are going to just quickly dump all of this out a little bit, and we need some plants, so let's, um, let's come and investigate this little chest here. And we are going to grab... Uh, we need a bunch of... So, we, we need to make some ghosts as well, which are quite fun. So, I'm going to grab a loom, white stained glass, white banner. I do believe it's a white banner. Yes. With some black dye and some white dye. But we need just a bunch of different plants. So, crimson fungus, crimson roots, warped roots, twisting vines. Something that I don't have as well, actually, which is good, it is a dead bush. So, I'm going to grab that as well. And we can also use some neverwort as well, because we have some soul sand. And a little bit later on as we move through this, we'll need the stone cutter, play ahead. We will also be reusing some of the uh, the ground blocks as well. Um, skeleton score, some zombie heads we'll need as well. Um, chains are also a really good decoration to kind of hang about the place. And um, maybe even, an, eh, probably not anymore, soul lanterns. Candles are always good, flint and steel, some stone slabs, some cobblestone wall perhaps. And we'll kind of just leave it at that and we'll just grab stuff as we uh, as we need it from this point onwards. So, first thing that I'm ex excited about is the ghosts. So we're going to make one. And um, we actually need two white banners for this, by the way, because we need to make two, um, two different banners. So throw a loom down on the ground, open it up and place a white banner in here. 
black die in the uh, in the loom. Place a horizontal row of black die straight through the middle. Grab the black die, throw white die in there instead, and place a horizontal row, or rather a vertical row of white die straight up the center. White die out, black die in, and now we want to place, what is the technical word for this? Black base indented, so we want to place that. But grab the other white banner, throw that in there, because we've done with that first one, and then we want to have the same black base indented as well. And this, believe it or not, is all you need to make a ghost. So one ghost I'm going to place over here on the left. It's going to be floating off of the ground. And I have found that I like the white glass for this as a base to hang, first of all, banner number one straight off of the front and then banner number two off of the sides. And that is kind of like a cool floating ghost. Really, really simple. I want to have a similar sort of thing just over here on the right next to this grave. Just a couple of rows off the ground at a different altitude and also at a different point. So maybe we'll have this set just one row backwards and then banner number one on the front and banner number two all the way around and there we go we just have a couple of spooky ghosts kind of floating around doing what they do crimson roots and crimson fungus can be used sparingly or not so sparingly around uh, around the front of this warped roots are really good as well to kind of just hit the vibe um, dead bushes as well. Again, we, do, we probably don't want too much of this. So when, when it starts to look a bit too... When the colours start to bunch together a bit too much. So, like it was there. Otherwise, it's quite spread out really. Then add a little root in... in uh, add, a, add some dead bush instead of like the roots. Um, and it kind of mixes things up a bit. I think that that's a nice little perfect blend. I might make this back, um, back crimson root here. I might make this into a twisting vine that will grow quite rapidly and it will uh, it looks quite cool i quite like it when it grows kind of like out of control so i'm happy to leave that as it is and that's kind of like the front of the build complete ladies and gentlemen the only thing that you might want to add here and there is a couple of skulls and heads so i think that a zombie head kind of like um or maybe even like a skeleton skull looks kind of like good here Maybe a zombie head over here, just in the center. Of course, you can have a zombie head popping out of the grave. That that kind of like adds a nice little extra layer. But again, you don't want to go too crazy with all of these things, really. Um, you could even have like a little skull just hidden back here as well. But um, moving on, decoration, decoration. So this is kind of like the front of the build. So this is kind of like th this is like the opener. So this is quite done. I think that we've added a nice level of detail here. So moving on up, this is the entranceway. I just want a stone cutter and a player head. Stone cutter on the corner, player head in front. And if you want to make it a tad gruesome, we don't have the material on us. I want, I want to grab it. Um, we can use redstone dust and a little bit of red carpet. Depending on how gruesome you want to get, you can have a little bit of dust and a little bit of carpet spread about the place. So to make that look as severed or as unsevered as you like, fresh or not fresh. And in between the two rows of grey concrete, we have to add some more detail as well. So th this is kind of like, you you're going to want to kind of figure out what exactly you want here for yourselves. But the idea is just to have some like different, so like if we've got soul sand, then we can place another wart. So um, we want to dig out some of these blocks. We want to have some pods. We want to have some twisting vines, some twisting roots, um, some never walk wherever you want it, some crimson roots. Um, if we build up little platforms like this, this allows us to have candles. And we can have this in a variety of places if we want to have a couple of sets of candles. And we can also have, what else can we have? So like a dead bush as well, if we want to kind of like break up some of the roots, as I mentioned. Um, if we add, I mean, you can even like just straight up just build up pods all if you want and have like dead bush, twisting vines might it could be a good place there as well. Although I think it could use a little bit more red, and then we could have like twisting vines at the end here. And nothing stops us ever adding some skeleton schools kind of just like on the outside, just like this to kind of like break up the decoration a little bit. And that is looking pretty good, I do think. I, I don't think that we have to add anything else. It's, it's also worth mentioning also, by the way, that as, as time goes on, after we've built more and more of the build, then um, I've advanced to the Stone Age, apparently, then we can start knocking out parts of the actual walls and we can replace those walls, use it, the wall, using different materials so I'm, I'm cluttering my inventory here i'm going to completely regret this a little bit later on but instead of the wall just looking flat 
and smooth and boring, we will be adding different materials to it. So andensite, all of the different stones, some stairs here and there. We will be chopping and changing it up so it looks a little bit more dilapidated. And um, everywhere that we've got candles, of course, we are going to want to light those up using flint and steel. And that is another little decoration as well. So a couple of little decorations, chain and black banners. And again, I'm cluttering up the inventory. I'm so going to regret this a little bit later on. But chains, just hanging chains themselves make, I think, just kind of a cool decoration. And black banners as well, just randomly. It, again, it, it kind of just adds to the vibe of the place. I think that it looks really, really good like this. And also i've just i've just thought about this as well so not only do we have to do this to kind of like this little lower level here but we have to move on and we have to have a little bit of decoration up here as well so on the second kind of like outward facing level we want to have like pods all placed about the place and some soul sand and some coarse dirt kind of like just placed evenly and randomly kind of like around here so the tracks kind of move through the middle of this so if this makes sense so the rails will move through the middle of the entrances so around that we are able to add you know like twisting roots and we are able to add once again kind of like a little bit of pods all here and there we're going to make want to make sure that the colors don't clash so we want to or at least in my opinion you know i mean you you feel free to add whatever you like where did the never walk go and the dead bush so here so we want to we'll probably want to change that to pods all and add some more through so we want to make sure that the these things don't clash too hard and we want to grab some candles and some player heads and some zombie heads and you know again you, you're just going to want to get like a little bit creative with it you know so we can have a zombie head just hanging off here at the side we can have like a little player head here just again i want it kind of placed yeah on the side there we can have candles on on both sides as well so maybe even like split up a little bit better like this maybe even uh we can't really place them any any further back i mean we could place them here and we can just have like roots although i'm thinking a bit now nah, roots are roots are fine there and once again uh, this is something easy to forget is do remember to keep lighting the candles um that's something whoops that's something oh there we go <laughs> a little delay there that's something that i uh, i easily forget and yeah and, and and we can once again add like chains and you could even have a ghost here on this upper level if you wanted to so like chains hanging down just like this to make it a little bit more i mean does that not look kind of cool I'd, i i kind of like it and then like a, a black banner kind of just like you know, I, I, I don't know if I like the black banner there in that position, to be honest with you, but you get the idea. Like, there's something nefarious about the chains, I think. They, they do just make kind of like a cool, a cool decoration. Um, other than that, I think that we're we're pretty good at that point in particular. So th this is kind of like the outer part of the build complete, ladies and gentlemen. So this is like all the decoration that we will be adding for the outside. Everything else that we do from this point onwards is going to push us more and more towards the inside the build. So I think that actually the last thing that we should do is we should gather the materials necessary to make the banner because we have to write in big letters and this is where I'm going to start regretting adding all of these extra materials to my inventory. This is where I'm going to start regretting that we have to write ghost train on the outside just in case nobody was sure what we what we've been making here we have to literally write ghost train in big letters hanging off the front of the build so coming back to the loom with our black banners and our black and white die black banner in there the first letter is the hardest to make so black banner in there white die we're making g vertical row of white on the right side of the banner throw that out put the black die in instead make the upper half of the banner black throw the black die out put the white die back in there horizontal row of white across the bottom vertical row on the left side horizontal across the top and that will be g i don't think we ever need the black die again the next letter is h so vertical row on the left on the right side and then horizontal straight through the middle h next letter is o so vertical row of white on the left right horizontal on the top bottom that is o next will be t horizontal row of white on the top and the bottom diagonal row top left corner to bottom right corner s so the next letter will be t so a vertical row of white straight up the middle with a horizontal row of white along the top that will be t so g h o s t that's the third word first word complete next will be train 
The first letter in train is of course T, so we don't have to make another one of those, we can reuse that one. So the next will be R. Vertical row of white on the left side, horizontal row of white on the top, diagonal row top left corner to bottom right corner, that is R. Next is A, so vertical row of white on the left, vertical row of white on the right, horizontal row of white across the top, and a horizontal row of white straight through the middle, A. Next is I. So, vertical row of white straight up the middle, my favourite letter to make. Last but not least, N. So, vertical row of white on the left, on the right, diagonal row, top left corner to bottom right corner, and here we have Ghost Train. So, this lines up quite perfectly, by the way, because Ghost Train is going to hang off of the centre row of stairs that we have that pretty much cuts the entire building in half horizontally. We start here with where this little build ends, and we place a G, H, O, S, T, leave a gap, I can't, there we go, leave a gap of one, and then T, R, A, I, N, perfect, ghost train, that is absolutely perfect, and that is pretty much the entire outside of the build complete, so we are able to dump all of these materials, we will never need these again, and uh, except maybe for the uh, the black banners actually and we can get to work on the rest of the ghost train the more technical part and arguably the more fun part with a bunch of the exterior decoration complete it's now time for us to focus on the inside so this actually means that we get to play some rails and some of the actual track and we can kind of get this thing turned into a nice functional ghost train instead of like a cool haunted house which it is currently so, I want you to begin by placing a rail right in the centre of this archway, which is going to be our exit. So this rail wants to extend forwards and cut across the front of the, the actual house itself, and it wants to lead into the centre of the entrance archway, so pretty much entering how it exits. So inside of the actual, I'll, call, I'll refer to this as the haunted house, inside of the haunted house itself we are just going to add a, a few sets of torches. It's really dark and atmospheric in here but that's not something that we're looking for whilst we're actually trying to figure out where we are going to be placing blocks. So inside of the actual haunted house itself, first of all we want to add a wall that cuts off the exit from the rest of the build, we drop down into this point, we don't want it connected in any other way. So we're going to add a hard wall right here, cutting off the exit from the entire rest of the haunted house. We also want to add a wall that cuts this area in half as well. So if you, we want to have a row of three as we enter the house, so one, two, three, and then cut this up using a row of stone bricks so this is going to half this entire area so we're going to snake up and down these hallways in our minecart and it just makes things a bit creepier so instead of like just it being straightforward we'll kind of like go this way and then we'll enter here and we'll come back on ourselves and it, it just adds a little bit of claustrophobia and it just adds a little bit of atmosphere to the place it's kind of cool it feels very windy and bigger than it is so now that we have this wall here at the very end we are going to create an archway so we'll leave a gap of one destroy one two three two rows up and then similarly to what we've done quite a few times already we'll add upside down stone stairs just in the top corner Z. and we can now feed the rails through the middle of the first hallway here this is the first room we can feed the rails through the first room turn the corner and then we can extend inwards towards the middle so we're going to extend the rails up the center a little bit, but then we're going to curve around and hook this back wall and then extend towards the back. At this point, we ascend to the next floor. So in the corner here, we're going to leave this corner block alone and then destroy, I think, one, two, three blocks will do it. On the first floor up here, we want to actually, we'll, we'll have a curve like this. So in the corner, we'll have a rail and then one here and one here. So kind of like a, a nice little bend. And then we want to have a set of rails that leads down to the ground like this. So we'll push a bunch of rails up here, up this diagonal row of stone bricks, uh, of stone bricks, just like this. 
and we want to kind of create the we don't really want to have like an a, a bunch of like open walls we again we kind of want to make it feel a bit claustrophobic a little bit like shut in it kind of just adds to the atmosphere of the place so instead of having these like instead of having this area exposed we'll build up a wall up to the, up the side and we will um, be shot up here onto the next floor so we do have plans for all of these by the way but we're just getting the base tracks laid down so moving up to the next level up here we are going to want to cut off this area so this wants to be a room all unto itself and we might have to um, dig down an additional row so um, we are going to add a wall right next to this window here and we oh no we can still go up and down that's perfectly fine and we also want to further reduce the amount of space in here because once again it, it just feels a bit better if we're a little bit more constrained so we only want to have a couple of rows so like we've got the track and then the row right next to the track so we're going to administer a false wall here so just like this and that's going to be absolutely perfect. So a little bit of a false wall. The rails will extend all the way across to the front of the build. It will come through and we will be led in towards the center of, um, into the center room here. So this center room is a little bit of a fake out because it looks from the outside as if you're going to just like, you're coming straight into just like a normal room, but we actually want to add a ceiling to this area. So the ceiling is added directly above the archway line. So we are creating a separate room all by itself. So we are creating a ceiling using the stone bricks. And this is literally just as soon as the archway ends at the top, just above the stairs, we have the stone bricks like this. We want to seal up this window. We First of all, it might be another good idea as well to add some stone bricks here on the left and right, just like this, just to kind of like turn this into a... Uh, oh, and also, <laughs> I know that I keep changing. Um, we're, we're going to add black concrete all across the black to like black out these windows at the back so we don't want to be able to see into these this wants to be very very dark and in doing that we can now split this room in half using a row of stone bricks so these want to be completely separate so we have like one empty room another empty room just next to each other and the rails as soon as the rails cross the threshold into this room we want to start ascending upward into the attic so we will have to destroy a couple of blocks here and then we will be fed into the attic and we will want to exit the same way so if we come down here and we place a rail here straight in the middle of this archway we can have an equivalent um, set of stone bricks that leads us well d not up but kind of like down actually so will lead us down and the rails i do believe are going to i want to make sure that i've got this right so the rails will come one row inwards and by the way of course like just connecting these so straight up the middle here into the attic they will come we want to have two rows at the back that we are able to place stuff in and add decoration and again we'll just add a torch here or there um we we will have two rows at the back and we'll have a bunch of these rows at the front and it might also be a good idea to add some black concrete to the ceiling of this to once again kind of like make it we don't want it to open an area like it wants to I, I don't know how to describe it other than it just adds to the atmosphere of that you're a bit closed in and there's a lot happening at once. This is going to go by quite quickly once we do hit this point in time. So um, the rails will feed through here, down here, into this last room. So they'll come across the front, straight through into this entrance. They'll come all the way towards this back wall. We'll leave it one row away from the wall. We'll have one, two, three rails and then we'll drop, I mean, maybe even just one, two. Shall we make it one, two, and then a couple of rows here. We want to create a false wall leading across the back, and we will drop it down, down here. So we'll have to add a couple of rails to make sure that the mine cart, the mine carts, I, mine carts, I think, drop pretty vertically. But it's okay. We'll just drop down onto here. We'll have an extra rail, and behind this and to the side of this, we are going to have a little ooze pit. So we could, now that we've kind of connected all of these things together, and by the way, we're missing something. So for whilst we're here, we might as well do it properly. Um, we are going to place a couple of campfires. 
So, we, we already have enough space. So, a couple of campfires in the ground here, right? With some... Actually, I think we have to dig another row, don't we? Yeah, we do. So, the campfires will have to be dug an additional row down like this. But the lime concrete surrounding it is, uh, is at the right level. And then we simply just want to place... I might be wrong about the campfires, actually. Yeah, no. The campfires have to be dug an additional row down, right? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being silly. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're dug at the right... Um, they're dug at the right height. So we want to have... And we can kind of, like... Um, it doesn't have to be completely glass, maybe... Oh, that's right. As the campfires... We... The, where the campfires are... We want to have, we do not want to have glass above them, so the campfires just sit below the lime concrete, lime concrete on top, nothing on top of that because otherwise that will stop the smoke, and we want it to look as though that it is like oozing and bubbling and it's something that you definitely don't want to be falling into, and then we just want glass surrounding it, and this is kind of the end. And we can decorate this a little bit further later. We can have maybe like the torch decoration that we've used kind of like a few times already. But that is where we exit. We will decorate that a little bit later. Let's work on some of the redstone features of the build. So when when I say redstone features, like I, I don't know what I'm doing with redstone, guys. There might even be better ways of doing what I'm doing. But let's let I'll, I'll just show you how I've got this set up. And feel free to change things around. So we will need powered rails. Redstone torch, detector rails, redstone comparator, redstone repeater, redstone dust, dispenser, piston, redstone lamp, and we'll leave it at that for now. Right here, where this grey concrete is where the actual ghost train is going to start. So I'm going to have a powered rail, and underneath this we're going to dig down redstone torch, and oh, this is unfortunate, we'll leave the lamp for a second. We'll have a torch in the ground underneath. And this is where the first powered rail will be. The next powered rail will be where we have the other grey concrete. So redstone torch, stone brick above it, powered rail. That is where we will have the next, well, the next powered rail. This should lead us through all the way into the next powered rail will be where we have this archway here. So kind of like digging once again down, torch, stone brick, powered rail above it. The next powered rail that we want to place, we are going to have where we start this ascent here. So, um, we should be able to just dig in the ground just underneath this, redstone torch, stone brick. So that is where, so this will keep us at a decent speed all the way throughout the build. So we'll have one powered rail here, we might even chuck another one just up at the top here as well. So another powered rail, so that will involve us. Unfortunately, we're destroying some of the track as well. So, uh, another powered rail just as we hit the top, just to keep the speed nice and level. So, we d we won't need too many more powered rails. So, one here, and then we will we are going to hide one here as well. So, actually here, where we have, um, where we exit this part of the build, we'll have one powered rail here, and then one powered rail here as well so just as we hit up here and we can even just literally chuck the torch on the side because it just looks like something that would be part of the actual build so that is it for the powered rails and ladies and gentlemen because the powered rails will take us right up here and then we will drop down and momentum will take us the rest of the distance let's make sure that that is okay let's make sure that that is a sufficient amount of powered rails that that will propel us throughout the build we've got to test this at every point that we come to so we're already off in the minecart the powered rails have taken us through the first room up through the second room we're on the in the third room we forgot to light this but uh, a simple torch should do so if we just hit a torch here that will power the rail that's perfectly fine and this is why we test things ladies and gent gentlemen to make sure that these things are working properly so that is nice and powered this will take us up through here into the attic we'll get shot straight down through here momentum will take us all the way to the exit we'll land on these rails we might need another rail just here or that might be a nice logical place to leave it and we can just leave a bunch of minecarts in the actual chest here so it might be good actually that we do end here but if you do want to make sure that it will take you all the way to the very end you can either put something so that this minecart so you'll get shoved directly onto here or like um 
I'm quite happy for it to actually stop because otherwise it's quite easy to kind of like keep continuing around and then the minecart gets slipped onto the powered rail and then it keeps going round and round and round and round and you've got to like chase it and catch it. So I'm quite happy to leave it like that. So that's cool. So all of the powered rails, we, we literally can go from the start to the finish. I kind of want to try that one more time. Let's try that. So into the minecart. And then as soon as we hit this first powered rail, we don't need to keep propelling ourselves forward anymore. We should just be taking throughout the entire build, which is absolutely perfect. So, and at a good speed as well, not too fast, not too slow. And we get to kind of like have a, a nice little look at everything as we go by. But it should also, it should feel a little bit rushed and almost as if you're in a tiny little bit of peril. So that's perfect. So now that we've done that, we can start adding some more of the redstone features to the actual track as well. So let's start with the first room and move our way through. So in the first room, the first thing that we are going to add, and we can get rid of this, we won't need the torches anymore. We need the, I don't think we need the torches, um, no. So detector rails, we will need detector rails, pistons, and also dispensers. I said that in opposite order, but dispensers and pistons. Redstone comparator, redstone repeater, redstone dust, redstone lamp. Absolutely perfect. These are the things that we need. And we'll probably accidentally destroy some track and stuff. So we'll grab the rails and the stone bricks. So somewhere a third into the first room, maybe as we turn this corner here, we're going to destroy this block. The one underneath it. Actually, we don't need to destroy the one underneath it. We'll destroy this block. Replace it with a detector rail. Right of this. Destroy this and then a dispenser facing upwards next to it. And in every single dispenser, we will place one of two things, either a fire charge, or I guess one of three things, fire charge, arrows, or bats. Here's the thing, bats are very cool. They're really cool to put in the dispensers. However, unless you are willing to round up and kill the bats, after you have a certain amount of them, I would stick to fire chargers or arrows or use bats sparingly. It does not take you very long to end up with a bat problem. I'm just warning you now, you feel free to do what you want. So, first of all, detector rail, dispenser, perfect. Another third or so of the way in, we will have another detector rail, but underneath this detector rail, we need to place a dust and then stone brick, detector rail back on top, Next to this, we're going to destroy this stone brick, and then next to where the dust will be, we will have, we're going to dig down one, and then we will have a, uh, a piston. So, the dust is right next to the piston, that's dug an additional row down, and on top of this we will be placing an armor stand with something on top of it. So, it's a nice little jump scare. As we move through here into the next room, so, not only in this room do we want to have a little jump scare, but we are also going to add the flashing strobe light effect, which I'm not a fan of in real life, but it's not too bad in Minecraft. So, if you've ever been into a scare maze or a haunted house, you'll know exactly what this is like. We have got to tear up a decent amount of the floor here. So, leaving a gap of one between this jump scare here, we also need levers. So, we are going to place a lever in the ground, and we are going to make a really simple redstone clock. So, extending out from the lever, we want to place a comparator facing this way, with a repeater next to it, then a redstone dust, extend the dust this way, and then we want to place another redstone repeater facing back towards the comparator, redstone dust to hook it back up, and if you activate the comparator and the lever, then you will have a nice simple clock. And all we have to do is on the end, chuck a lamp. So the lamp, I want it to be, I want it to just be set just one row under the ground here. So like this, and if we activate this lever, maybe maybe we have to make this, uh, I mean, that's that, that should be fine actually. We can have it a little bit lower because the effect will be dimmed a little bit. So we just want to have, there we go, this. So if we if we have less torches around, this is a much bigger deal. There we go, so we have a nice flashing light effect in this room. And um, it, it's, it's just kind of cool. So like with the jump scares and what have you, you come into the ro this room, it's relatively dark. The less and less torches we have, obviously the more ambient and cool this is. And there we go, it, it just creates kind of like a nice cool effect. And um, so moving up to the first first floor hallway, we are going to add a couple of contraptions. 
The first thing that I'm going to have is once again a jump scare, because it's kind of my favourite. Leaving a gap of one between this powered rail here and the ground, I'm going to dig down and I'm going to place a piston. So the piston has to be set two rows down from the rail. Underneath this rail here, I'm going to have to place a stone brick or something to place redstone dust on, and then above it will be a detector rail, so that will trip that piston. As we move further along, we are going to try and find the separating... Actually, it, it actually doesn't matter at all, so we'll leave a, a few rows here, so maybe literally a few, so one, two, three, and then we want to place a dispenser like this, and then a detector rail. So literally just right next to it, we'll just leave a gap of three and then that'll be perfect. And then we can decorate around this just like that. And that's perfect. This hole, so we have a jump scare and we have again like a fire charge or a bat or something like that or maybe some arrows. This actually wouldn't be a bad place to hook up an arrow trap as well if you did want to. So like say we leave a gap of one between this detector rail and another one. And we should be able to extend redstone dust here through into this wall, have it curve around, and then um, if we place just like this here, and then if we have this should, this should work right, so then if we have the dust connect into a dispenser in this wall, then we could also have like, right, is the... So here we go, so perfect. So the dispenser just has to be set one, one row backwards. So um, not only could, maybe we could like release a bat, but we could also have arrows fire outwards. I do believe that'll work. That's a lot of detect rails, by the way, but you know, this is just another option for you. So um, if we were a little bit worried about getting actually hit with something, then um, could we put this on a slight delay? Would this still, whoops. Would this no it, it doesn't connect so we have to place this dispenser next to it that should work right and then i guess that we would have to place the repeater just on the ground here so we do have some open redstone which is kind of like not you know not ideal but maybe we could actually hide it with some vines or something but that might actually be another good idea and then we can fill this dispenser up with arrows later and that that should work and if we put like an ever so slight delay on we should get past this or the natural momentum of the the minecart might actually be be fine as well but we'll have to see we might have to tinker about with that so we actually have three contraptions here which is pretty cool or if we wanted to we could like Actually, yeah, we'll, we'll keep three contractions and we could contractions, not contractions, and we <laughs> different thing completely. Okay, so moving on. The next part is going to be for us to come up into the attic here. So this is quite a pivotal part of the ride because, it, again, it's kind of a fake out. You think that you're going to be going straight, but like you get shot straight up into an attic, or at least from the outside that would appear that way. Not until you get to this point in the ride, unless you've rode it before, you don't really know what's happening. So up here, we are going to have three sets of dispensers. So... Um, the first dispenser is going to be right here, so just as we enter, and one on the opposite side. So I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking like a bat. We'll probably put bats up here. So maybe a bat in the middle. We'll have like a. We can have like a. We'll take this opportunity for another jump scare because why not? And um, underneath this, we'll just have to place dust, won't we? So as we enter, we'll we'll release a bat. We'll have a jump scare and then fire as we go down. So that's how we'll work with that. We need a detector rail here, here, and we have already and we want to place one here. So as we enter, as we leave, and right in the middle, we'll set all of those up a little bit later. That's perfect. So moving into this last room, we are first of all going to replace this end rail here with a detector rail. Place a dust next to it on the right extend it one row back towards this wall and then hook it up to a dispenser which will be overlooking the hole that we will inevitably drop down into and then in the back of the room we want to destroy a hole through this false wall and in the very back corner here we are going to place a lever redstone comparator repeater dust dust to the right then we're going to start coming back on ourselves with a repeater then a dust we are then going to extend this end dust here back to the wall and we are going to destroy this block this is ultimately going to be turned into a redstone so 
That is perfect. And then we are going to have a ghost above this or behind this. Eh, we'll see when we get there. So if we activate this and then activate the lever, that will create a nice little circuit or a clock or whatever the technical term is. And we'll just leave this open for now because I don't want to leave this running because it, uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes the flashing light kind of annoys me. <laughs> so. so with all of the technical stuff done, I think that we are just going to decorate this room because why not? Why not start the story at the end? So in this room, we are going to need a spruce trap door play ahead, stone cutter, we'll also need white stained glass, white banner, the other white banner, we need both of the ghost banners basically, we need uh, chains, black banners, and then we'll need like redstone dust and red carpet. So over here on the left we are going to make a little table made out of spruce trap doors, and that just begins with us flipping a spruce trap door upwards, place a trap door behind, and then another one. We'll form it into a little table, and on the table we'll have a stone cutter and a player head. The head specifically wants to be facing this way on the table. Um, we are going to have a ghost above and behind this little redstone here, so the white glass will go above and in front, and then we'll place all of the banners around just like this. You could even leave, like, because this keeps everywhere quite hidden, if you wanted to turn this contraption on and off, you could just kind of, like, leave that open, although I guess it, it probably wouldn't matter too much because you're not going to be spending loads of time in this room, so there's no reason for you to be able to get to that level whatsoever. So the rest of the room we're just going to decorate with chains just kind of, like, hanging from the ceiling. So it's kind of up to you um, how many of these you want to use and in what sort of variety. A couple of black banners strewn about the place, a couple of redstone dust to kind of like look like blood. Um, we're going to use a little bit of red carpet as well to help kind of like uh, exacerbate that effect. So I think that that looks pretty good. That's looking quite nice. And all we're going to do is just in this back room here, and we'll I believe we'll have to do this elsewhere. We'll have to grab this. And we're just going to grab black concrete, seal up these two little windows here, and then we'll seal up this wall. I guess I'll, I'll leave this running. And then we'll seal, seal up this wall because we're kind of just out of here. And I think that this is like a cool little room to end it on. And we'll just have to load that up with arrows a little bit later. As we drop down into here, I want to add... I, I, I'm considering adding the same sort of like light fixture that we've used a few times already. Which is the polished deep slate wall with the lantern on top, the soul lantern specifically, and the warp signs around. I don't know whether I like that on that down here. I think it is quite cool. And um, you might even find that you like a couple of like lime carpets like kind of spread about the place a little bit. Maybe literally just a couple looks quite cool. And I think that, that that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I really like how that's turned now. And in doing that, ladies and gentlemen, we are now actually going to head all the way back to the beginning here. And it's now time for us just to decorate around the track and load up all of the the little gadgets and mechanisms that we've created. And then we'll kind of be done. Okay, so starting right at the beginning, we are just going to destroy some of the blocks in the ground and just replace them with Podzol or Soul Sand or uh, Corsta or whatever it is you might like to place there. And we'll, of course, place some vines and some fungus and some roots wherever wherever we feel necessary just to kind of like set the set the mood a little bit. At the end here, we've got enough space that we can place like a, a little mock grave just like this. And we can place uh, some heads a little bit later. We can even wrap it around a little bit. Maybe even some vines hanging down. I think that that's pretty cool. Kind of sets the scene a little bit. Um, we can also add, I mean, I don't know if it will be too much in the middle here, just to add kind of like a, a little grave marker. I don't think that, I, I don't know if that will be too much or not, but I, I think that that's pretty good. So this, uh, this is a pretty decent pass through here. Um, vines, I, I really like the idea of vines just like hanging down, just like as we move through and the, these should grow, I assume. The weeping vines. I've not used too much of them. I mean, we can grow them manually, so I do assume that they will slowly grow through. And um, again, it's kind of like that feeling of kind of like creepiness and claustrophobia. Like I really, I really like that. So we can have uh, another little uh, grave here. I think that that's a good place for one. And um, once again, kind of like we can just have like walked roots and 
like vines hanging about the place, like here as well. Something that I want back here is a ghost too, and maybe even like another, once again, kind of like keeping with a, just a bunch of graves and stuff, because they are such a good decoration, in my opinion. Like, I, I really do... Uh, do you think that really adds something to it so we'll we'll definitely add a little grave here and we can add we'll just we'll just do a pass of the whole thing with like all of the like organic sort of stuff and then we'll come back with everything else so moving up here as well once again like wherever we have like a nice little spot we'll just um we'll find a place to and this this the vines would actually be a good place for the arrows i think to kind of like conceal them a bit but anywhere that we possibly can we'll just add like the vines and the well roots and everything like I, I, again just kind of like keep things uh keep things like kind of like nicely ambient and um i think that it'd be a good idea as well we'll just have to re-grab the pods are to shorten this room so if we can make it so that we have maybe where, where can the black concrete sit so the it looks dark here i think that that's perfect so just a couple of rows in we'll just cut off the uh we'll just add some black concrete here just to make it look as though that the room is a little bit more ominous than it is like um because it's dark it's like oh wow what's in there um building around this i'm just going to grab the pods all back again if i can there we go and um we can just build up using pods all and we can build up using soul sand as well where is my soul sand um can probably get rid of that so Maybe a little bit of soul sand in there. Like if we do pods all on one side and soul sand on the other side, and we can just place whatever in these. I mean, obviously it's going to be never wart in the in the soul sand, but I, I don't know. I just think it looks uh I just think it looks pretty cool. So we'll place that here. Maybe a bit of pods on, and we can grow some vines. Yep. Yeah, okay. So some vines hanging down there, and maybe some vines here as well so like attack it from both both angles and a little bit of pods all just i mean it can even creep out of the room a little bit as well i think that would be pretty cool and we can just kind of fill the rest of the area in with different mushrooms and uh just the different kind of roots and yeah i, I, I mean i don't know if that's a little bit too much with the red to be honest maybe we need to and mix it up a little bit. Maybe we need to add a little bit of blue in there. We can have the Neverwater still just by the side. I think that that's a little bit better. I think that we were getting a little bit too samey. So, same thing there. I think sometimes a little bit less is, less is more. I think that that's better. I think that there's a little bit less clashing there. I think that that looks pretty good. Um, I mean, I'd, there's always the option as well just to have like a, a candle or so, just maybe like a single candle. I thought I grabbed the flint and steel there. Like a single candle or something as well, just to kind of like mix things up a little bit. And moving upstairs, so up into the attic portion, we are going to... We'll, we'll actually make all of this now, just because it uses a bunch of different stuff. So the centerpiece is going to be somebody in a coffin, seemingly trapped, to, uh, trapped in one. This is in the back middle. We'll have a spruce plank, a few uh, free spruce planks extending back, or oh, extending forward from the center part of the room. Spruce trap doors are built up around this, and then spruce trap. We could even get rid of these end two planks actually, and turn these into uh, spruce trap doors as well. And then at the very end, we'll just have a player head, so it looks like somebody's on that's been like buried alive or coffined alive, so to speak. And then around this, I think that a good design is to have a bunch of never war. So if we just dig around the coffin like so and we just place some soul sand and we can chip some of the blocks out around it as well so kind of like mixing them in a bit kind of like this and then some never wall place i mean it doesn't it, it can be a little bit messy and we can even have some like candles and stuff again kind of candles and we can even chuck a, a cheeky head in uh, every so often just like this i think that that looks pretty cool um even maybe even like a little bit of um red carpet and some dust as well might not look amiss up here too so maybe like uh maybe like one here maybe like just a little dust there something like that you know kind of sprinkle it about a little bit so here is a bit harmless as well so here i think that that looks pretty good that looks nice and then hanging from <laughs> nice that looks nice and then we i think we could even use the same lantern design that again the classic lantern design of here probably like have a wall here and here just above where the entrances are with the soul lanterns 
and the warped sides around the walls just to kind of like fill in the space a little bit just like this and then we can just have a chain or two kind of like whoops kind of like dangling about i think that that looks pretty good one one lower than the other or one preferably kind of like on a slightly different plane kind of like that i think looks really good and then for the rest of the room i again kind of like coming back to gravestones like I'm, I'm obsessed with these aren't i so gravestones with like heads protruding out of them and around them so like in this corner here for instance i think literally like yeah we'll do one row inward so here here and then maybe well i guess We'll just have to replace the reds, um, this here, so here, with like a skeleton skull, maybe a bit of redstone dust, console, zombie head. In the back here, maybe we go for the classic like grave marker design, so because we've ju just got the room for it and we'll get rid of this torch here. There we go, that's perfect. And again, it's, it's kind of like a little bit dark up here and it'll get lit up when like a fire charge or so goes off. It'll look really cool. I don't... Oh, that's a jump scare there right in the middle. I wondered why that was uh, was that was down. But um, we can always add the chains and we can always add more... Um, we can always add like more black banners and stuff kind of like about the place. But I think that this is like suitably creepy now. I really like this. Um, if we did want to add just a little bit more light just so that we could see a little bit better. Just, you know, just to kind of like illuminate the graves after we've done all of this hard work. I think that that would look pretty good. So yeah, that, that's this room kind of done. We've done the two rooms um, below us. So I think that we're now going to, this end room is completely made as well. So I think that we're going to do another sweep and we are going to fill all of, uh, all of the traps in. So um, as I mentioned, the traps are pretty much like, it's a toss-up, and we, we need armor stands and different heads as well, by the way. So feel free to d use different heads, but just for the easiness sake, I'm just going to keep reusing the same sort of ones. And around here, we kind of have, like, um, we should really have, like, a little bit of light and some candles as well, just to kind of, like, at the end of the room, something to, like, focus the eye on. It's like, oh, whoa, what is that, you know? So anyway, the first dispenser that we have here will just make it a straight-up fire charge. So we'll add a couple of fire charges in here because we'll play test it a little bit. Um, on here, we want to have an armor stand with any head on top of it. That'll be perfect. As we move through and around, and once again, kind of like maybe a candle or two just to... I don't know whether that's distracting. No, because you can't really see it. It actually illuminates that room a little bit. And we can have like a zombie here maybe creeping in the background there. Um, we'll need another armor stand and we can have, again, any head on there is fine. Um, heads kind of like dispersed on the graves. Oh, we need we need the ghost. We'll go and fetch the ghost in a little second. So moving around here, we'll need, once again, we'll need another armor stand with a skull on it. This, we are going to put more fire charges in. Again, the bats, you, you're going to want to be careful with the bats, I promise. Um, this dispenser here, we are going to chuck some arrows in. I don't know what spectral arrows are, by the way. I don't know whether I'm making a mistake by using these instead of regular arrows, but we'll, we'll give them a go. Spectral sounded kind of cool with the whole vibe of the place. Up here is where we're going to have the bats. So, the first thing, fire charge first, to kind of like light the room up a little bit. On this armor stand we'll have, oh, this, why is that not a piston? Ah, uh, that should be a piston. My bad. Um, I don't know why that's a dispenser. That must have obvious mistake. So, on here, there we go. Armor stand. We'll put a player hat on it, because why not? Um, then, in this dispenser here, we will have bats. I'm telling you, too many bats and you'll end up with a problem. But, um, I think I think that that's pretty much it. So, that's that's got stuff in it, right? That's got, got a jump scare here. We've got this dispenser. We've just got one last dispenser to add some arrows into. And once again, I'm hoping spectral arrows don't let me down. So here, that's perfect. And then last but not least, I, I can actually um, steal it from here. Um, we want to have... I want to have a ghost just... Um, it was in... This is probably the fastest way in this room and it might be a good idea to add a little bit of light to this room i might like add a lantern or some candles as well so actually let me do that let me add before we move on uh some candles because I d y you just want enough light right like you don't you don't want too much but you also don't want too little either so i can't spell flint because it doesn't start with a semicolon so trapdoor here candles a few. I'm, I'm assuming more candles is more light. 
I'm assuming. I think that that's fine. Drop down into here. I want the ghost kind of like here, just on this wall above this grave. I think that, oh, maybe, maybe to the right so that we get the full ghost. So here, here, here. I think that that looks pretty cool. I like that. And that is the last of it, ladies and gentlemen. So before we playtest this thing, and I really do want to playtest it really, really badly, we are just going to go around the actual haunted house itself and we are going to chop out some blocks. So the last little thing that you can do to give the ghost train, the haunted house, a little bit of character is to go around and make it look a little bit less perfect with some different stone blocks. So instead of all of these stone bricks, which are nice and neatly lined up everywhere, if you grab some of the other stone related blocks, literally the stone stairs, literally the stone and cobblestone and andensite and whatever other blocks you particularly fancy, knock out some parts of the walls, replace them with some upside down stairs, regular stairs, some of the different stone blocks, and just make it look a little bit more dilapidated, a little bit more run down, and I think that you will like the effect or don't, it's up to you. So I really want this to work first time for you guys, and the only change that we have to make for the actual track is for the arrow trap on the first floor, first hallway. If we remove the repeater, because it actually wouldn't make a difference anyway, because the arrow has no chance of hitting us, remove the repeater, replace it with regular good old redstone dust, and in doing that, the whole track actually works perfectly. Let's have a look. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, our hard work has paid off. We have now made the entire haunted house slash ghost train, and it's looking so awesome. I've been looking forward to this part in particular throughout the entire video. This is when we actually get to ride and enjoy the ghost train. So I've grabbed my minecart out of this handy little chest, and as you guys know, if you take one out, you've got to put one in. So let's throw this down on here, hop in, and let's enjoy the ride. And everything should work perfect. So we start off on the outside. We're hit with the first jump scare, second one. Ambient everywhere, scary. We almost got hit with the arrow. We've got the fire trap. We come in here, another fire trap. Bats have been released. We come down here, almost hit with the arrow. We, we just about fall into the zoos and we are catapulted back onto the track because we hit this minecart here. So it's actually not a bad idea to leave this because it kind of like bounces us back on. So every single one of our mechanisms work. Everything's nicely decorated. We finished. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. Please do remember to Aww. like and subscribe. Click that little bell next to the subscription button. That will ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. If you would like to make any more of the theme park, carnival, fair, whatever you want to call this giant collection of rides and food trucks and games that I have assembled, check out the description below for the How to Build a Fair slash Food Park slash Carnival playlist. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.